Hello, and welcome to the online edition of Nightwatch for September 2024. My name is Bill, coming to you from the Sudicum Planetarium here at Adventure Science Center in Nashville. And as always, we'll start off with the moon phases this month. We find the moon will be new on September 2nd. First quarter moon on the 11th, full moon on the 17th, which will also be the harvest moon this year, being the full moon that's closest to the autumnal equinox, and last quarter moon on the 24th. Speaking of that full moon, the harvest moon on the 17th, there will be a partial eclipse of the moon. However, only about 8% of the moon will be covered in Earth's shadow. So this is not as dramatic as a total lunar eclipse. However, if you're up during the mid-evening and it's clear during that harvest moon on the 17th, you can watch as a small bite is taken out of the moon as it slides through a very small part of the Earth's shadow. Again, only about 8% of the moon will be covered. The eclipse will begin at 9.13 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Maximum eclipse, again, only 8%, at 9.44 p.m., and the partial eclipse will end at 10.15 p.m. So this is not a very long event, only about an hour long, but you can watch as a small bite is taken out of the moon during the partial lunar eclipse on the same night as the harvest moon. Speaking of the autumnal equinox, that will occur on Sunday, September 22nd, this year at 7.43 a.m. Central Daylight Time. The day when we have equal day and equal night, the sun rises due east and sets due west as we transition from the warmer time of the year to the cooler time of the year here in the northern hemisphere. Looking at planets this month, we find that by the middle of the month of September, Venus will be returning back to our evening sky, being visible in the evening sky in the west during evening twilight as a very bright white star-like object. You can't miss it. And because of our viewing angle, Venus will not be getting much higher in our evening sky, but will be shifting toward the west-southwest by the end of the month. Keen observers with an excellent view of the western sky right after sunset may catch a glimpse of the three-day-old thin crescent moon passing to the left of the planet Venus as they set together in early evening twilight on September 5th. Saturn is also now an evening planet, rising in the east-southeastern sky at sunset and is up all night long, moving across the southern sky. Saturn appears as a yellowish or cream-colored star-like object, and the rings are visible in a backyard telescope, but be aware they are approaching their edge-on position, so as viewed from Earth, they appear like a bright line going across the planet. The nearly full moon will be passing nearby Saturn on the night of the 16th. Jupiter rises a little bit later, around 11 p.m. during mid-month, and appears as a very bright white star-like object rising in the east. The last quarter moon will be passing to the left of Jupiter as it rises on the late evening of the 23rd into the morning of the 24th. Mars is now rising a little bit later than Jupiter at around 12.30 a.m. to the lower left of where Jupiter is as it continues to move away from its beautiful conjunction with Jupiter that occurred last month. See the moon passing above Mars as it rises in the east-northeast on the 25th. Now for late night sky watchers, during the month, you can watch Mars move farther and farther away from Jupiter from our viewpoint here on the Earth. Here we see how close they'll be appearing to each other on September 1st, and then as they move apart by the 15th, and then the 30th of September. Looking in the sky, at about 8.30 p.m. during mid-September, we find the Summer Triangle overhead, made up of the constellations Lyra the Harp, Cygnus the Swan, and Aquila the Eagle. Below them, see if you can see any of the stars of the faint constellation Capricornus. This is a very tough constellation to see in light polluted areas like Nashville or other cities. Here we'll take a quick trip far away from the city lights and see what the sky would look like without all the light pollution. Notice with the darker sky how many more stars we can actually see. Late summer and early autumn is a great time to also see our beautiful Milky Way galaxy stretching overhead across the evening sky. Pegasus is also rising higher in the eastern sky 
in the evening, look for the four stars that create what we usually call the Great Square, or the Autumn Square. Use Saturn as a guide and look above the ring planet for Pegasus. And notice that the picture of the mythological flying horse in the sky only shows his front end. Behind this group of stars, we find Andromeda, the princess, just beginning to rise up higher in the northeast. Also, as of this recording of Nightwatch Online, we are still awaiting for this year's Nova to appear in our evening sky in the constellation Corona Borealis, the crown, which is now setting in the western sky in the later evening. What? You haven't heard about this Nova in the sky? We have an interesting story that's been getting some press this summer, and you may have seen these stories about a Nova appearing in the sky this summer. Some of them are quite exaggerated. However, beware of these exaggerated stories online about a bright new star appearing in the night sky this summer. This Nova is a recurring Nova, which occurs about every 80 years. So we know it, it's about to happen, and we are expecting it to happen this summer. But don't confuse a nova with a supernova, which is the final titanic explosion that destroys some dying stars. This nova involves a double star system, where a giant red star is close enough to a white dwarf star where they're orbiting each other. And hydrogen gas from the giant star is being poured onto and building up around the denser dwarf star due to gravity. After about 80 years or so, this gas ignites in a thermonuclear explosion that blows the built-up gas away in a very, very bright explosion. The smaller star briefly becomes bright enough to be seen in our sky for just under a week. This one was first noticed in the year 1217, and the last time it blew was back in 1946. And again, we are expecting it to happen this year, as all indications are that the gas has reached the point where it's going to blow. The star will be in our sky at about the same brightness as the star Polaris, or the North Star, which of course is not the brightest star in the sky, no matter what anyone else might tell you. We see here a close-up of the area of the sky of the constellations Corona Borealis next to Buotis the Herdsman. The faint constellation is hard to see in light polluted areas such as Nashville, so you want to get far away from city lights to see this faint constellation, which looks like a smiley face or a letter U shape right next to the constellation Buotis. Now, normally, you wouldn't see this star at all. Even if you're far away from city lights, you need a big telescope to see this star. However, when the nova happens, it will be appearing simply as a new star in the sky as shown here. Look carefully as we blink it on and off so you can see where this new star will appear in the constellation Corona the Crown. Again, this will only be lasting for about a week or less and we don't know exactly when it's going to happen and when the star will brighten. So go outside each clear night and see if you can find Corona Borealis and see if you notice anything brighter in that part of the sky. Because when this star does appear, it will be brighter than the stars of the constellation, but not even as bright as the star Arcturus, the bright orange colored star in Buotis. Check reputable online science websites that don't have sensationalized stories to find out when this nova actually does occur. A good one is a one-page website that's updated every day by astronomers, and that is spaceweather.com. Now don't forget, if you can't remember everything I've mentioned in this online edition of Nightwatch, you can grab a copy of our online star chart at adventuresci.org slash star charts and you can download our star chart with even more information than what i've mentioned here on this online edition of night watch also during september laser shows return to the planetarium on saturday september 14th where we'll be running at 5 30 p.m laser david bowie at 6 30 laser prince and at 7 30 we are premiering our brand new laser show laser elo featuring the music of the electric light orchestra also come and join us here at the Sudicum Planetarium for our regular version of Night Watch under our beautiful starry dome. And now we have upgraded equipment under our beautiful dome to make all of our shows look even better than ever. Check out AdventureSci.org for more information about all of our programs and other activities and events happening here at the Science Center. 
And remember, Adventure Science Center is where our mission is to open every mind to the wonders of science and technology, fostering a better understanding of ourselves and the world around us. And we hope you can join us here at the Sudicum Planetarium and Adventure Science Center for all of our programs and events and activities here at the Science Center. And until next time, I wish you clear skies. <laughs>